Hi folks. So I'm going to talk today about um, taking this 3D model and bringing it into a 2D uh, program like Photopia or um, Photoshop or whatever else you might be using. We're, I'm going to use Photopia today. Um, I want to take this 3D model and I want to be able to use Photopia's drawing and painting and texture tools to add the details to my model or to take this model and use it as a basis for uh, illustrations or things like that. Um, there's a lot that I can do with this once I get it into Photopia. Not so much that I can do with it while it's here in, in 3D land. So I, want, I need to get this model into my 2D program. Okay, so first things first, um, you have a couple of options likely on your um, model that are going to make it maybe not ideal for this. So there's a couple of things you want to do first. Um, if you have, uh, let me just add one thing here. I'm going to just add a sphere. Um, if you are using multiple objects on your model, and you may or may not, some people have uh, have built their ob their model using multiple pieces. Some of them are just one single solid object. But you'll notice that if you have multiple objects in your, um, let me make one more here. Uh, if you have multiple objects in your scene or connected to your object, uh, you can only select one at a time. And as you select them, uh, the other ones that aren't selected uh, change color. And we don't really want that to happen. We want them all to look the same for what we're going to do. So I'm going to go up here to the scene menu and I want to just turn off that option, which is right here. It says darken unselected. If you turn that off, they'll all look the same. Uh, I also want to, while I'm in here, also click the option to turn off the grid. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so as I was saying, I have uh, turned off that option to darken unselected objects. Uh, I also want to choose the option, uh, deselect the option here to show grid. Uh, that's going to get rid of that grid in the background, and now I can freely work with my object with nothing distracting in the way. Um, so the other thing I want to do is I now need to position my model at exactly the angle that I want to see it in my 2D program. Uh, once it goes into Photopia, it's, it's now a 2D object, which means uh, I can't turn it, I can't adjust it, I can scale it or rotate it, but uh, I can't rotate the actual object to see the other side of it. So I need to get it exactly the way I want it. Uh, this can be a little bit tricky. Um, remember, you can zoom in and out, of course. Uh, you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to position the model left and right or zoom in and out. Um, personally, I'm using a mouse, uh, so I'm uh, doing the equivalent of clicking with two fingers, which is a right click with a mouse, to rotate the view around. Um, if you're having trouble positioning it just where you want it, um, a little trick that is really helpful. Uh, if you, if I want to look at a particular uh, area of my model, like if I want to, let's say, look right up his nose, uh, if I double click on his nose, sometimes it takes a couple of t times for it to work, but if I double click on his nose, uh, it will position the nose at the center of the model, uh, or it will position the rotation around that point. So in other words, if I zoom in and out, it goes right to that spot that I clicked on, and if I rotate it, it rotates it right around that spot. Um, if I, say, go on the side of his head here and rotate, it's now rotating around that point. If I click, say, double-click over here, it's now rotating around that point. So you, you might need to click a couple of spots to find just the view that you want. Um, I'm going to, say, go for uh, this view right here. So you want to get your view just exactly the way that you want to see it in your 3D or in your 2D program. Um, I also want to sort of zoom it in um, so that it fills up as much of the screen as possible. Uh, the way that I'm going to get it into Photopia is essentially a, not essentially, it is a screenshot. So I want this as large as it can be to give me the highest quality possible. Okay. Um, the last thing that I need to do before I actually do the, the screenshot and the exporting is I, I might want to adjust my rendering over here. Uh, the rendering determines 
what the surface of your model is going to look like. Uh, there are a variety of options over here. They all look quite different. Uh, specifically, the way the light shines off of them is really, really different. Um, they also tend to have a different level of contrast. So some of them are more contrasty than others. Um, I can't really tell you exactly which to choose, uh, but my suggestion is to choose one that gives you a strong degree of contrast. So this clay one here does not really have a whole lot of contrast. Uh, a lot of the detail disappears. Compare that with, uh, say, this uh, pearl, and you see a lot more details with the pearl. Um, but you'll have to choose what works for you. Uh, you can also change up here where it says matte cap. Um, uh, a fun one that you could choose over here is normal shader, and that's going to give you some wild colors. Um, the normal shader is designed to show you the different um, heights of different things or the different uh, changes in elevation of the lines. So uh, as the colors get warmer, that suggests that that surface is coming up. Uh, as the colors get cooler, that suggests that that surface is going down. As you turn the model, you get some pretty wild colors. So that might work for your final image too. It's really totally up to you. Um, for right now, I'm gonna go with this. I think it's fun and I'm gonna stick with this for the moment. Um, the last thing that I wanna talk about is the choice of the background color back here. Okay. At the moment, uh, this is a great choice for me because this is a really contrasty background. You want to pick a background um, image or background color that is a strong contrast from your object. Okay. So in this case, my object has these really wild, intense colors and my background is this pale gray. So this is perfect for me. Um, if you've picked one of the other options, uh, you might find that, like this one for example, it's it's very similar. This gray and this gray uh, are pretty close together, so it's not really a great background for this uh, specific uh, material. Uh, the way you change that is right up here. You can go to background type and you can choose image, uh, which currently is gray because I actually haven't selected an image. Um, environment, which puts this sort of uh, fake uh, landscape back behind there, which looks kind of cool, but um, it can actually cause problems because uh, like right here, the contrast is not great. Right down here, the contrast is not great. Uh, it looks great up here, but down here it doesn't really work so well. Um, so I'm not going to choose that one either. I'm going to choose uh, ambient, ENV or ambient environment. Uh, in this case, that is sort of a blue background. That's a pretty great contrast for this gray, so that would work fine. Um, I'm going to end up going back to what I had before, which is this, and that's what I'm going to use for now. Um, so let's talk about getting this into Photopia. So um, on a Mac, uh, or excuse me, on a Chromebook, let's say, um, the shortcut to do a, um, the shortcut to do a um, screenshot on your Chromebook is you press control and then shift and you press the switch menu button. Okay. Uh, let's look at it, shall we? Chromebook switch, switch menu, switch window key. That's it. So the switch window key on your Chromebook looks like this right here. If you see that, um, that's the button I'm going to have you push. It's usually above your five or six key, depending on uh, what kind of Chromebook you have. Um, but uh, anyway, so you're going to hold, press Control and then Shift, and then that Switch Windows key button. Okay. Um, once you do that, it's going to allow you to draw out a box, which is essentially a selection of exactly the area that you want to. Um, take a screenshot. Uh, on a Mac, you can press Control, Shift, and then 5 on your keyboard, and that is going to um, allow you to do exactly the same thing. Uh, Control, Shift, 5, or excuse me, I'm sorry, Command, Shift, 5, if you have a Mac. Command, Shift, 5. Um, on a uh, PC, which is what I'm using currently, you can just press the Print Screen button, um, or if you want to use something more fancy like the 
snipping tool, you certainly can do that as well. Um, bottom line, make a screenshot. Okay. Um, in this case, I'm going to save this screenshot. Uh, if you are doing this on your, um, if you are doing this on your own uh, Chromebook, you don't have to save the screenshot. It'll be saved automatically. Uh, I'm going to just call this Gorilla Screenshot. Okay, I'm going to throw it in a folder on my desktop. There you have it. Okay, so now that I can go back to Photopia, okay, um, I'm going to. I'm not going to open that file. I'm going to actually click New Project. Um, and the once I click new project, I'm going to choose this image size right here. Uh, it says FB event image uh, or 1920 by 1080 pixels. And then I'm going to click create. There is the size that I'm going to use. Um, I'm then going to click file and I'm going to click open and place. Uh, note I'm not clicking open. I'm clicking open and place. When I click open and place, and here is my gorilla. Okay, um, fairly simple at this point. Uh, I have a gorilla now on a separate layer. If I did this correctly, um, if you didn't do it correctly, you're not going to have it on a separate layer. So make sure that you put it on a separate layer, um, or make sure you did it exactly the way that I showed you. Uh, the main mistake people make is they go to open instead of open in place. Open will just open this file, which I don't want to do. Open in place will take it and actually place it into a document as a new layer. So there it is. Um, so what I want to do now is I need to get rid of this background uh, behind my gorilla. Okay. Um, the easiest way, it's really not the easiest way, but the, the first thing you might want to be tempted to try is to just grab the eraser. Um, and just start erasing. Uh, as soon as you start that, a uh, warning is going to pop up. It says smart object must be rasterized first. Um, you can click OK, and that's going to allow you to start erasing. But I don't want to use the eraser. Um, it's very slow. Uh, it's not very, it, it, well, it is very precise. I was about to say it's not very precise. It is very precise, but um, it takes forever, and it's, uh, there, there are, there's a faster way. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use over here this tool right here called Quick Selection. Uh, I could also use the magic wand, but Quick Selection I find works really well. Um, if you don't see this Quick Selection, it's this little guy right here. If you don't see this on your computer, uh, it's probably because you have this tool selected, uh, which is the Object Selection tool. Quick Selection is hiding underneath that object, so if you hold down, you'll see Quick Selection. Uh, the shortcut is W. You can also press W until you see the quick selection tool right there. Uh, so very simply, all you have to do, because I picked a nice contrasty background here, uh, if I just click on my gorilla one time, it should make a pretty good selection of the edge. Okay, uh, and in this case, it did it absolutely perfectly. Um, if your background is similar in color, it might not look as perfect. Um, or if your object has some weird some weird shapes, it might not work as perfect. Um, but in theory, if uh, if you've done everything right, it'll work just like this. Um, and then the final step is uh, simply adding a layer mask or a raster mask, which is this little guy right down here. That's a little weird. Let me. Uh, I guess I can't scale that, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, right down here at the bottom of my layers is the. Uh, raster mask or layer mask button. Uh, because I've made that selection first, now I click the layer mask button and it will make a mask using that exact selection. And it's very fast and very simple. Okay. Um, now my uh, object has been cut out. I can uh, do all kinds of fun things with this and I will get to that uh, in another video. Thank you.